Um, thank you very much for coming for the screening. And just I've been working very hard for the past few years to bring this film out. Even though I'm not a professional filmmaker, but um, something I had to do. Um, because many of you just know me as a software engineer working in uh, EMC. But uh, a lot of you don't know um, what I do after work, after 5 p.m. or 5.30 p.m. on the weekends and the mornings and stuff. Uh, my passion is uh, social justice and also uh, especially within the uh, GLV community, uh, gay, bisexual, transgender um, community, and especially focus on Asian and South Asian community here in the US, also back in South Asia and Asia. Um, you all know that I grew up in India, I was born and raised in India. I've been living here for the past 12 years or so. But um, uh, just growing up as adults, maybe 14 or 15 years old, I lost hope about my life because I was so confused about who I am and all the imagery I'm seeing outside, outside was all about heteronormativity, you know. Boy loves girl, girl loves boy and everybody gets married, everybody is happy. But for me it was not the case because I was attracted to, eventually attracted to men. And I was so confused and the terms of you know, gay, lesbian and all those things I never heard of and for a 15 years old kid. And I was so confused, and I nobody can talk to, blah, blah, blah. And I just like, you know, one day I got so frustrated, I was so depressed, I think, that I, I tried to take my life. And uh, many teenagers take their life uh, because of their sexuality, and nobody talks about it. And there's a real danger. And, um, but I survived because my mom, mom, mom found me, and I was in coma for a week, and I almost did it. But when I woke up, I made a promise to myself that I will take care of myself because nobody's there to take care of me. Nobody's going to listen to who, who I am and accept me for who I am. And um, so I made a promise to myself that I'm going to work on betterment of myself first. And I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to be true to myself. And I'm not going to deceive anybody. And um, so that's where the growth started. I went to engineering school and I made concrete efforts to come to states and I've been living here for the past 12 years and happily gay and stuff. But when you look back at the community I left back in India and also the South Asian community here in the States, the United States, we all go through a lot of issues even within the South Asian community and outside of the South Asian community because when you just break some norms and immediately you stand out and you get singled out and that becomes a big issue about acceptance within the community. And especially for a South Asian being a minority within a majority community as a person, people of color, we, people are defined as, as people of color because of this shade of color, we are, we are not white. And it becomes a big issue because a double-edged sword because we get harassed by the majority community and also by the South Asian community, our one kind, and also by the gay community itself because the gay community is nothing, it's represent the reality in the world because it's all about white, black, browns, yellows, and all those differences. South Asian and South American, Mexican, and Spanish, and French, and all the differences comes into play even within the gay community. Many other people don't know. So the South Asian community really, uh, the gay community has a lot of things to baggage just to clean up. And it's not easy for anybody. But the project like this really gives people a voice, a visibility, and gives a positive identity about who we are. Because people have so many different notions about who we are. And um, so I try to bring together the straight and the gay South Asian communities here in the United States. And I ask them certain questions. I'm trying to agree on certain things and disagree on things and see what we can do to move forward. Because as it is a South Asian community, we don't have any role models in this country because we are new immigrants to this country. Uh, not many in, in generations we have lived in this country. So we don't have much role models and especially within the GLB community, there is no role models at all. And it is interested to people like me to be a positive role models for the kids, saying that it's okay to be gay and to be who you are. And drugs, suicide, and all, the, all these things are not an option. You can have a positive outlook about life and you can be happy. And there is acceptance. If your parents don't accept it, that's fine. But there, are, there is a community which accepts you for who you are and be beautiful person who you are and live your life. And uh, anyway, so I decided to make this movie uh, a couple of years back and uh, I somehow managed to do it with all the work I do on EMC. 
And um, so the movie has really got some good attention. And uh, I want to share a good news with you guys. Yesterday I was contacted by MTV. They have a channel called Logo, which basically is used for the um, LGBT part of um, the culture. They are interested in seeing this movie to pursue whether to buy US rights. So I was so happy about it. I don't know whether it's going to materialize, but at least they they were interested in this topic that makes me more happy because that's the whole idea of making this movie is to create a visibility. It's not about that all the technical nuances and all the technical correctness or political correctness of this movie. That's not the uh, intent of this movie. The intent of the movie is to create a visibility, positive visibility of the community and also acknowledging that these are the issues that exist and how we can all contribute towards solving some of these issues. And maybe acknowledging it's, itself is a big step towards doing something different.